What's up, everybody? My name is Garrett Hartle, and we're back here at Reach Out Reptiles with Father Levi. I've been ordained a priest for the Diocese of Pittsburgh, so Garrett said, we need to have a session on are snakes really evil with a Catholic priest? Are snakes really evil? Yes, I love this. <laughs> so if you're tuning into this channel, this is by no means a religious channel whatsoever. <laughs> Typically we're attacking like misinformation uh, about animals from a more well, scientific or, or just observational kind of a, a pet trade perspective. So we've got my daughter's uh, ball python onyx here because we figured it'd probably sit still the best, <laughs> more so than any of mine. One of the things that if you guys have been lifelong enthusiasts of snakes, I'm sure you've encountered as I have, is that you know, when you start to say, have express the desire to your parents, your family or something, bring snakes in the home, you're going to run into this kind of, uh, I think it's like maybe partly religious, partly cultural opposition mm. to snakes themselves as an animal. And there's nothing more frustrating being somebody who's like spent their lives trying to understand <laughs> this animal and, and come to love and appreciate mm. it than to have somebody tell you that that thing that you love is evil, is gross, or is bad. Yeah, I was, I was a little shocked when Garrett was like, yeah, people think snakes are evil. And I was like, what? They do? <laughs> and then we started going Which through- Which is super weird. Yeah, I, I was like, like- More people well, think they're evil than good. <laughs> you know, like if you just take a random bowl. Right. But at the same time, I guess my perspective is always, you know, God made everything good, right? Genesis, he creates, he says, this is good. You know, he creates humanity, he says, this is very good. So I'm thinking, well, that's crazy. But then we started going through some scriptures and we're like, oh, well, this is interesting. Huh, Yeah. okay, so, I'm gonna actually have to think about this. So I cracked out my uh, Bible app there and, and looked up and you can do searches on stuff on all the different verses where snakes are mentioned in the Bible. And there's mm -hmm. a ton of them. Yeah. There's a ton of them. <laughs> Almost all of them are bad, but a few of them are not so bad. <laughs> I would say, just jumping right into it, the, the perspective that snakes are evil probably starts right in the beginning where it says that Satan, you know, was a snake and deceived Adam and Eve into sin, which was the fall of man and everything's been downhill ever since. Well, actually, at the very beginning was the creation of the snakes where God said, this is good. Okay. Right. I would say that would be the second part. The body can be possessed, but the soul is not possessed, right? The will, the, the freedom to choose, God protects that will. Now, obviously animals are slightly different uh, than humans in that respect, but that everything God made was good. God doesn't create evil. In fact, if we're gonna say, is this good or evil? We have to know the definition of them. Evil is actually a privation of a good using Thomas Aquinas's definition. Back me up on that. What is evil again? So evil is a words. privation of a good, which means it's a lack of something good. Okay, so you're saying say. in the beginning, everything was complete, God made it good. Everything was perfectly good. Everything was awesome. There's no evil there. Right? And then evil starts to come into the world almost as like a let's chisel away at the ideal scenario. Well, the only way that evil comes into the world is when, when Satan, because remember the angels choose before they have this first choice. They, we say, you know, the church fathers have said that Satan was jealous, even jealous of humanity because he was the highest, most beautiful angel and we're these pathetic little humans and yet God raises us up to unity with him higher than what Satan even had. That's where this evil then comes into our So that creation. happened first and now then there's the world and God makes people and snakes and everything else. Right. So the snake is good, it gets possessed, it does this bad deed like with Satan, is this accurate? Yeah, actually, I'm glad you said the word possessed because in a possession, if you're doing an exorcism, um, a demon actually speaks through the person, right? There has okay. to be a manifestation to have an exorcism. So I would say, yeah, when we hear in scripture that Satan is speaking to the woman. I don't think the snakes spoke usually. So obviously, Saint, the enemy is operating this animal at that point. They get busted. She eats the apple, she gives it to her husband, God says, what happened? He says, it was her fault. She says, it was the snake's fault. And God curses the snake. Well, I'm glad you said that because when you say the snake's fault, actually the word used for snake here in Genesis is the word used for Leviathan, which is actually a giant, like more dragon-like scary creature. So it's not so, even the same snake. It's just translated into English. We don't have as many words. Right. So other places in scripture where it talks about snakes, like, oh, you're like cobras and adders. I know I found verses that were specific 
physical types types of snake, they're saying different things. It's a different word, huh, yeah. Interesting. That probably leads to a lot of the confusion right there. Of confusion, right. If I'm going to play the devil's advocate, uh, this isn't the only place that they talk about snakes or that bad things happen to humans through snakes. Right. For example, you have just a, a little bit further in the Bible, I know that Moses was taking out God's people right from from Egypt where they were enslaved they're out in the desert they're bad they decide to disobey him anyways and then he sends kind of like a plague of venomous snakes to bite them and they're all suffering and dying mm -hmm. so the story goes they made a, a staff correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff they they made a staff with an image of a snake on top of it made out of bronze and lifted it up on a, a stick and God said, if you look at the snake, you'll be healed. And I think part of that is the, the origin story for a lot of like the medical industry. Mm -hmm. You see the snake on a staff. And I know that there's different versions of that story, like Greek and Roman versions that are a little bit different. But basically you have a, a snake killing people and this snake is saving people. Do you have any insight on that? What was the deal with, with that? Two things come to mind. As you said that, like, well, God used snakes to punish the people, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't he use frogs in Egypt? Oh yeah, that's true. Didn't he use like he used <laughs> right. many other animals? Gnats punished the people, right? So yeah, there was a just donkey because... that talked to somebody one time to rebuke <laughs> them, and right. But okay. but for the e to bring evil and to like to to punish the people, there were lots of animals used. So I would say we don't say oh frogs are bad. They're that's a evil, really good point. Yeah. Right? So if if people are being um, strictly prejudiced against snakes, they're gonna right. see all those oh snakes being evil. You know what I mean? Parts, but they don't look at every, everything else. But right? those venomous snakes in the desert were not necessarily evil snakes either. Right. I've said this in the past when people talk about snakes being evil. And I was like, that's weird. Jesus compared himself to a snake. And they're like, what? Is that some obscure parse passage of the Bible? I'm like, no, it's in no. John chapter 3. You know, John 3, 16, <laughs> for God so loved the world that they teach everybody as kids and stuff. Uh -huh. so I always love this part, but it's, a, it's actually in John 3... 14, let's see, well, I'll back up to 13. So Jesus is talking, he goes, Now no one's ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man, talking about himself. He goes, Now just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So he actually, Jesus himself compares himself to, so I was like, yes, I love this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I love that one, and then the other, the other one I love where Jesus is commending snakes as a creature is mm -hmm. saying that we should be shrewd like snakes and innocent like, like doves. doves. You know what I mean? So he's he's commending them for their shrewdness, their ability mm -hmm. to survive. And there's a few passages in, in scripture where, you know, God or, or Jesus is talking about being shrewd, like this shrewd mm -hmm. manager and all this stuff, saying, I wish people were more like that. You know, right. don't just be stupid and innocent. That doesn't help anybody. You still gotta be smart and innocent. So I, I like that he commends snakes. You know, someone was saying, well, but snakes bite. And I was like, which animal outside wouldn't bite you if you picked it up? But if you go pick up a cute little chipmunk or a baby raccoon and see that you don't have natural... You don't get a bite, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Knowing that something like this ball python is, is perfectly harmless and, you know, and very docile. And I said to you, it's not venomous, it's not gonna hurt you, and you still hate it. <laughs> that that borders prejudice you're saying to me that you hate the only animal that bears in its body no legs and crawls around on the ground and everything a representation of your own sin that you deserve to to you know die for right basically mm -hmm. um and you are saying that okay you can look at jesus who was on the cross cursed like you said bearing that sin you can look on him and be forgiven, am I right? Mm -hmm. But then you look at that snake who is used as the same symbol that Jesus himself compares him to and say, I don't forgive you. <laughs> You're gross and sinful and evil. Doesn't that seem like hypocrisy to you? Well, a lot of us hate ourselves, right? Yeah. It's because we hate ourselves and then we project that on everybody else. So, But it's interesting as you make that point, it goes back to the Genesis point of this reminds me of our fall. Right, it reminds me of our mistake that we were deceived and Adam's job was to defend Eve and to till the garden. He was supposed to be taking care of everyone. 
So his, he is the first person to make the mistake in the garden because there shouldn't be a, a giant dragon talking to his wife, trying to, <laughs> trying to convince his wife that she should be doing something, right? And scaring the daylights out of her. So he's just no, like, her in the beginning. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Ad Ad Adam, where are you? Why are you not protecting her? Why are you not there? And so I think there is something to that sense of like, oh, I don't want to face the evil inside of me. Right. I don't want to face the curse that I have to bear. As I look through all the different times that snakes are mentioned in scripture, a lot of times, like Jesus says to the religious leaders of the day who are messing everything up, he's like, you brood of vipers, you snakes. And he, he uses it as an insult. But I really mm. do think there's a separation between kind of what's at the heart of the matter and, and the physical being. So I think the thing about snakes then is that we're looking at them wrong. Mm. We're still doing it today. We're still looking at them wrong. We're looking at them as being disgusting, sinful, evil. And really, this is just a quite a pleasant, natural creature. You want to hold her? Sure. <laughs> so she's actually mm -hmm. quite, a, quite a pleasant little, she's so little awesome. creature. You know, she's such a nice creature. It's funny because uh, I think part of that is the scary versus dangerous thing too oh, like when like we my feel kids fear talk about, yeah yeah like this is one of the first times i've held a snake you know i just well today i think it was scared? the first time <laughs> i'm not really scared i don't know why i'm just a little bit nervous That's something i don't new. think it's i don't think it's about the snake but um yeah but th there's something they're just so precious we had a long conversation once where garrett explained to me the difference between being scared something being scary and something being dangerous and how most snakes aren't dangerous at all. Dangerous is like, this is going to kill me or this is going to severely injure me or hurt me in some way. And just holding some of the snakes and having them crawl up me at, at first, it's like, ah, this is a little creepy. But then you're like, this is such a, this is a nice little snake. And just watching how they move, how I'm yeah, just like mesmerized by yeah. the, the muscle action. I'm like, he's holding on by his tail. He's down here. Now he's picking himself up. I'm like, how are you doing that? I mean, that's crazy. It's just, it's just so, they're so interesting. That you I, know what's funny is that's exactly how I tell people to get over their fear or prejudice of snakes. Hmm. I say a lot of times you're afraid so you avoid it. You don't want to learn anything more. And right. You're, you're ignorant, your, your fear is based in ignorance of what you don't know. Right. The way to get over that is to study them. But it was actually my that's kids awesome. that taught me about that. You know, hmm. uh, I can't remember if it was Kira or Riley. But one of them said, um, you know, there's a difference between something that's scary and something that's dangerous. And then they said, did you know most grown-ups can't even tell the difference? <laughs> and it's because they've seen hatred of people mm. towards snakes their whole life. But they've never seen a reason the snakes to be they afraid grew up of them. with thousands and thousands of snakes. And <laughs> all of those snakes of all the different species never gave them a reason to hate or fear the snakes. Hmm. None of my kids are afraid of them. My conclusion is they're adorable. And I, <laughs> and I, I may buy one, <laughs> we can but I'm up. not sure. Um, yeah, because they're tons of fun. They seem We'll give you a long-term loan. Good to... You can give it back whenever <laughs> you want. How about that? Okay. Or that keep it forever. Good. I think that'd be great. I appreciate it. That's the least I can do for you coming on. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. All right, you heard it there. <laughs> snakes aren't evil. They're adorable, according to the priest. They're it's adorable. Scriptural. They're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next book of the Bible. God loves them. Yeah, God loves adorable everything things. he made. So there was, another, <laughs> there was another cool part that I found in the book of James, where it's talking about taming the tongue. But it's saying all kinds of animals have been tamed. And it mentions, it's like, you know, mammals, and it mentions reptiles. Mm. And it says, but no man can tame the tongue. And I was like... See, like, evidence see, we for the domestication of reptiles <laughs> from thousands of years ago. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So it even talks about tame reptiles as far back as, as scripture. It's cool stuff in there, man. That is very cool. cool. Everyone should just go read their Bible. Yeah, read your Bible. Love snakes. It's a good thing. Love Jesus. Love others. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Peace.